Hey guys, welcome to part B2. Let's see how you did with this. Check your answers and then watch whatever you need to practice. Number two was 16 miles per gallon. Number three was 20 miles per gallon. Number four is probably kind of tricky, but it's 50 cents per square foot. Number five, also a little tricky, um, elevator traveled upward at a rate of six feet per second. And then number six, the answer was um, 250 square feet per pound. All right, so all of these problems involve finding some sort of unit rate per one, and our main strategy to represent our thinking is to use a ratio table. Um, so the first one says a truck uses one and a half gallons of gasoline to travel 12 miles. Notice that in the ratio table I put 12 miles and one and a half. And then we're trying to get to one gallon. And one strategy is just to multiply or divide one and a half by itself because anything divided by itself is equal to one. So I'm going to divide by one and a half. And up here, I'm going to do the same thing, divided by one and a half. Um, if this is a calculator section, great, but it might not be. Um, so this is what we would have to do. We would have to do 12 divided by one and a half. And the main strategy you guys like using is multiplying by the reciprocal. But we can't do that yet because this is a mixed number. So what we would have to do first is say, well, one and a half, that's like three halves, and you'd have to rewrite it this way. Then you can do 12 multiplied by the um, inverse, or the reciprocal, of three halves, which is two thirds. To multiply that now, we just have 12 times two is 24, and one times three is three, and then 24 thirds, that's like 24 divided by 3, which is 8. And that's why the answer here is 8 miles per gallon. And you really want to stop and say, does my answer make sense here? And it really does, because 1.5 gallons went 12 miles. In 1 gallon, it would make sense that that would be less than 12, just by a little bit. And it ends up being 8 miles for that 1 gallon. All right, number two is the same type of problem. So let's do miles and gallons. And our starting ratio is 36 miles um, using two and a fourth gallons. And at this rate, how many miles can the car travel per gallon? So that's telling us that we need to get to one right here. Um, so let's use the strategy of dividing two and a fourth by itself, and then dividing 36 by two and a fourth to figure out what the unit rate is. So then we would take two and a fourth and convert it into an improper fraction. So two times four is eight plus one is nine fourths. Now I can multiply by the inverse of nine fourths, which would be four ninths. And if you multiply across, you should get 144 over 9. And then if you figure out what that equals, 9 goes into 14 once. 9 goes into 54. Well, 9 times 6 is 54, so 6 times. And it looks like we would end up with 16. So the answer here is 16 miles per gallon. All right, um, if a state test does this type of problem, sometimes they'll try it with two mixed numbers. Um, so let's try this one. So we have miles and gallons. Really doesn't matter which one you choose for the top or the bottom, as long as you know which one we're trying to find one for. Um, so we have one and a half, or one and an eighth gallons, and 22 and a half miles. Um, and we're trying to get to one gallon. So already I know that my answer should be really close to 22 and a half because we're only going down an eighth of a gallon. Um, 
but let's use the same strategy, dividing by 1 and 1 eighth. So we have 22 and a half divided by 1 and 1 eighth. And assuming we don't have a calculator, let's write these as um, improper fractions. So 22 times 2 is 4, plus what? 22 times 2 is 44, plus one more would be 45 halves. And then 1 and 1 eighth, well that's like 8 eighths and one more, so 9 eighths. Um, this is going to get kind of big. So 45 halves multiplied by the inverse, which is 8 ninths. And since we're not currently taking a state test, let's use a calculator. 45 times 8 is 360, and 2 times 9 is 18, and then 360 divided by 18 equals 20. So the answer here should be 20 miles per gallon, which matches our prediction. It's pretty close to the original amount. All right, so I really didn't give us many problems like this throughout the year, um, and I should have, but it's pretty similar. We're still looking for a unit rate. Number four says wallpaper was applied to one rectangular wall of a large room. The dimensions of the wall are shown below. All right. If the total cost of the wallpaper is $30, what was the total cost in dollars um, of the wallpaper per square foot? All right, so square foot, area is measured in square foot. So let's start by finding the area of this rectangle, which is just length times width. Um, so that would be 12 times 5, or 5 times 12, same thing gives us an area of 60 square feet. And then we know that to put wallpaper on this wall, this is me putting wallpaper, um, it cost a total of $30. So that's $30 for all 60 square feet. We want to figure out how much it is per one square foot. Ratio table is one way you can represent this. So let's do dollars in square feet. So the whole thing was $30, and that covered 60 square feet. And the problem says, how much is the cost per square foot? Or what's the unit rate per one square foot? And now, hopefully you can see, this isn't too bad. 60 divided by 60 is 1. And then 30 divided by 60 um, be careful, you might think that the answer here is 2, but we're starting with a small number and dividing it by a bigger amount. 30 divided by 60 on my calculator gives me 5 tenths, which is the same as 50 cents. So that's 50 cents per square foot. Um, and that makes sense because if I were to take 50 cents, and multiply it by all 60 square feet, I would end up with the cost, which was $30. So hopefully that wasn't too bad. All right, this is one of those careful reading problems, which is just hard to figure out what it's asking. The elevation at ground level is zero feet, which we already know. Zero feet is like sea level. An elevator starts a hundred feet below ground level. So that's like down here. After traveling for five seconds, the elevator is 70 feet below ground level. So that means it goes from here to here in five seconds. Um, it might be useful to figure out how far apart that is. If it started at negative 100 and went up 70, it looks like it went 30 feet. So it went 30 feet in 5 seconds. Which statement best describes the elevator's rate of change in elevation during this 5 second interval? Um, just to show you how this connects with everything else. Um, 
this elevator went 30 feet in 5 seconds. And to find the rate of change, that's another fancy term for unit rate, um, I could just divide by 5 over 5, which would be 6. Um, so it looks like it was going 6 feet per second. So now let's look at these statements. The elevator traveled upward at a rate of 20 feet per second. That one's wrong, and it would basically be if you just took 100 and divided it by 5. But the elevator didn't go 100 feet. It only went 30 feet. B, the elevator traveled upward at a rate of 6 feet per second. That one's correct because we went up from negative 100 to 70, and we went 6 feet a second. Um, and the others, C and D, both involved the elevator going down, and we know it didn't do that because it started at negative 100 and then went up to negative 70. All right, the label on a one and a half pound bag of wildflower seeds states that it will cover an area of 375 square feet. That's a long sentence that basically tells us one ratio. It tells us that if we have pounds and square feet, one and a half pounds covers 375 feet. Based on this information, what is the number of square feet? So it's saying, what is square feet? So I'm going to put a question mark there. That one pound of wildflower seeds will cover. So I'm going to put a one in the pounds spot. And now this problem is as easy as the very first problem. So if I want to get to one, I'm going to do one and a half divided by one and a half. I'm going to do the same thing down here. So that's 375 divided by 1.5, which is the same as 375 divided by 3 halves. Then I multiply by the inverse, which is 2 thirds. Um, and 375 times 2 would be 750, and that's 750 divided by 3. And then 750 divided by 3, well, 75 divided by 3 is 25, so that's like 250. And that's why the answer is B. All right, so I hope if you're still watching this that this helped you make sense of these problems. Let me know if you need help with anything. Keep pushing yourself. We're almost there, guys, and I'll see you tomorrow.